Good morning. I have just finished up working on part two of the door series and I just wanted to show you what the porthole looks like. I just think it's really cool and I'm excited to carry on with the cladding this morning. I've got a lot of work to do. It's a gorgeous day out there. So let's get started. I'm really excited to get to work today. I have a variety of tasks to do. The cladding, so I've got some carpentry. I've got to hacksaw this window off. And I think I might actually do some rendering around the door as well, just to tidy that up and get it done. And later on in the week, I'll hopefully start work on the shutters and some other sort of artistic features of the door. I still need to go back into town and get another packet of the cladding before I can really finish things off. But I'm hoping I can get a whole bunch done today. So let's go investigate the polytunnel, pull out the pieces that I've already prepared, and get to work. My capacity for creating clutter truly knows no bounds. So these pieces, most of them, are unusable in their current state, but I have prepared quite a few. So let's get those out and get them linseed oiled so that they can dry before I start using them later on. First though, I have to clear out all these pieces. These are gonna be for the second wall panel in the bathroom. So I just wanted to get these oiled, cut to length, and ready to go. And you'll see these guys again in a shower video, which will hopefully come very soon. I don't exactly know what to do with these at the moment, so I'll just leave them on this chair. As some of you might know, I make maps for a living, street maps, but I also like a good door map. So basically, I've marked the pieces on this drawing, cut them to size, and on each piece I've also put the corresponding letter. So I'll dig these guys out. These are the pieces I have ready to go, and they're probably the only pieces that I'll have ready to go today until I get into town and get more wood. So my plan is to linseed oil the backs only, and then when I'm finished the entire door, all the pieces, I'll sand everything and then linseed oil the front, probably when it's in place. So let me get these oiled up and drying so that when I'm working with it later on, I don't get all gross and linseed oily. With this kind of wood, with pine, you really do want to protect it with something. I choose to use a mix 50-50 of turpentine and linseed oil. Um, you could also use sort of more chemical-y stuff, but Hopefully it's not necessary. I try to avoid using the chemical stuff if I can. If you're using wood outside, especially pine, you probably want to go with the hardcore stuff. But because this is inside my house, I want to keep it nice and natural. So let's get this stuff oiled.
Okay, linseed oiling finished. I'm happy with that. It can dry. I can deal with that later on. The next job is going to be hacksawing this window to the right thickness. It's too thick to fit in the door, so I need to measure how thick it needs to be and then chop it off. I'm hoping the plastic is soft enough to be able to get through it with a hacksaw. Uh, I probably should have tested this before I actually designed the entire structure around this specific window, but I think it'll be okay. So I just need to figure out where to cut it. Okay, so the time degree is gonna go on like this, more or less. And do I wanna chop this off? so that the tongue and groove goes around this, or so that the tongue and groove kind of goes over top of this. I feel like I want it to go around it, just in case water gets in. If it goes over top, it could sort of sneak down the interior of the door. Maybe? Uh, I'm gonna do it so that the tongue and groove goes around this bit. So this is going to stick out about, well, it's going to stick out the thickness of the tongue and groove. And then when the tongue and groove is attached, it'll all, in theory, be flush or just a little bit uh, shy of the, the face of the tongue and groove. Makes sense? Makes sense to me. Mostly. Uh, anyway, let me mark it. Let me saw it. And let's see what happens. So if I happen to royally screw up this window, the good news is that I can use this one in the shower. The depth of the window doesn't really matter for the shower sections, so I can hide away any mistakes if they occur. But I think this should be fairly straightforward if I can get the marking correct. So let me mark it up and let's stick a hacksaw to this thing. Let me give this some gentle encouragement. Success. going more or less to plan, but it is kind of finicky and irritating, so let me just get this done and I'll check in again when I have a window that will hopefully fit in the door. Okay, all done. It's a bit jaggy, so do a bit of sandy sandy and then stick it back in the door. created a bit of a microplastics nightmare here. I'll tidy that up in a minute. I thought now might be a good opportunity to address why I have the window opening on the outside of the building instead of the inside. I had so many comments about that in the last video. It's a great question and I just want to try to explain uh, the method to my madness, I guess. I've got maybe three main reasons for doing it this way, but before I go into those, first of all, opening the window from the outside takes approximately five to seven seconds longer than opening it from the inside. So it's not a hassle. It doesn't put me out at all. And if it's raining outside, I'm not likely to be opening the window anyway. So, you know, I'm not going to get wet by going outside and opening the window. But mainly I wanted weatherproofing. So I bought a window like this because I had no idea how to actually make a window myself that was going to seal on the outside. I don't want rain to be getting in this hole and so I wanted to buy a window that seals. 
if I have the window opening on the inside, I basically lose that weatherproofing that is the entire point of the window in the first place. Um, I probably could have come up with something that would have kept the water sort of out, but it wouldn't have been the same. I just want it completely on the outside of the door. I don't want any chance for water to be able to sneak in the window hole. So that's the main reason. The second reason, I guess, is just aesthetics. I've got this weird window. You know, it's quirky. And if I'm going to go quirky, I might as well go all quirky and have this thing showing from the outside. It gives my house a little bit of extra character, I guess. And yeah, I think it looks kind of cool in a, in a strange way. So aesthetics was another reason. Uh, another very important reason was the fact that I want to put shutters on the inside of the house. So quite often the window will be open to let light in, but closed to the elements outside. I will have a screen in there also. And if I had the window opening on the inside, it would have made it impossible to put shutters on the inside over top of it because of these knobby things. So rather than having shutters on the outside, I decided to put the shutters on the inside because that's something I'm definitely going to be opening every day. I'm not always going to be opening the window. It's not always going to be uh, warm outside. It's not always going to be dry, but I'll always want light. So having the shutters on the inside is the thing that I want to be able to open from the inside. It also means that making a screen is a little bit less finicky as well. Uh, so there's that. Oh, and also security. So I, uh, you have to see my door to know that security is not going to be an issue. First of all, yeah, I guess somebody could open this and reach their hand in and try to unlock the door. But the way the door is, you can't unlock it without also having the key. And when I'm not home, the key comes with me. So it's not possible to open uh, the door from the outside just by reaching in. Plus, you know, I suppose somebody could throw a baby in through this and try to get the baby to open the door from the inside, but the baby would need a key. So, you know, nobody's getting in here and causing any havoc either. And also I'll have a screen in the window, not exactly secure, but then beyond the screen, I'll have the shutters and the shutters can latch closed. So security absolutely is not a concern of mine in this case. Uh, you know, more worrisome would be when I actually do the large window and somebody can actually crawl in there and crawl out of there with stuff. So that's something that I might consider putting a metal grate over. But, you know, my actual window is, is where the security risk will be. I'm absolutely not concerned about security for this window. So I guess that's it. In summary, security, not an issue. Opening it, taking five seconds later to open it, not an issue. Having weatherproofing, having shutters on the inside, having the ability to attach a screen easily from the inside, and aesthetics. Those are my reasons. I know it's strange, I know it's unusual, but I have a feeling you're going to be seeing a lot of unusual things happening in this build. This is a good example of how this building is definitely not going to be, you know, your usual building. There's going to be lots of weird things I do along the way, and it's a good reminder for me to actually chat about them in the video while I'm doing things. Sometimes I make a decision and I forget that it's probably a weird decision. It's also a great example of why asking questions uh, is great. I love getting the questions in the comments. Like I said, I almost always have some reason that I've done almost everything. I give things a stupid amount of thought before I do anything. It's debilitating, but it does mean that I'm always happy to share my reasoning. And there will be cases where maybe I've done something and it's turned out to be completely wrong in the way that maybe it doesn't work as well as it could. I don't know if there is any right way or wrong way when you do your, your self build as long as everything stays up. I really do appreciate your questions and your comments and challenging me on certain things. Uh, I love that and I also love explaining it as well. And so I hope this all makes sense. It's how I'm doing it. It's what I've decided. It's weird. It's wonderful. And I'm excited to go stick this back in the hole and continue working. So let's go get it in the door. Actually, before I get this window back in the hole, I have to mark up the pieces of tongue and groove so I can make a circle and make sure it all fits nicely. I also need to charge my camera battery and eat some lunch. So let's take a bit of a break and I'll check back in fairly soon when we can put this window back in and hopefully attach some cladding onto the back of the door. Finally.
I'm very, very excited about this stage. Okay, I'm back. I've had lunch and things are starting to take shape. I've clamped this stuff on here so that I can go to the other side and mark a circle. So that's my next step. Okay, I've marked my circle. I can cut that and that means I can put the window in. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to cover the entire thing with a window frame that I have yet to make. So like the trim on the edge of the door, uh, it'll kind of cover up any dodginess. So let's cut another circle. So many circles. So there's my circle marks. I guess I'll get the jigsaw out. I'm a little concerned that the jigsaw is gonna rock and roll this all over the place. It's a bit flimsy, but I'll try. Let's see. Not bad. working quite well. I gotta say, I don't think this is my enemy anymore. I think we're becoming friends. So that went way more smoothly than I was expecting. So hopefully everything from here on out is as easy as that was because I was expecting this to be a lot more of a hassle than it's been so far. Let's see if I got the hole size right. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do the little nubby bit. So there's always something, but here's the hole. And now I just need to cut out this little top part. Okay, hopefully that is adequate. Plenty of wiggle room, but that's okay. It's gonna be covered up by a frame on the inside. So yeah, I am very happy. The tongue and groove stuff needs a bit more attention. I have to figure out the grate at the bottom, but I know it fits around the window, so I can put the window back in place. Okay, window on, and I really, could not be happier. This side I think is good. Now we need to focus over here. Still a lot of work to do. I've had a great day of work, a whole bunch of varied tasks, and everything has gone more or less to plan. I'm gonna do a bit more work off camera. I'm gonna sand up the panels for the door, and I'm gonna think more about what I wanna do for the grate area. I'm also gonna mix up a batch of lime as well. So I'll do all that so that I'm ready to just dive right into the work tomorrow. Anyway, enough chatting. I'll see you guys tomorrow for another day of hopefully successful work on the door. Good morning, everybody. It's cold and misty out here, foggy. I don't think the weather forecast this and I wasn't expecting it to be drizzly. So I had some grand plans to head outside and work on the tongue and groove, finish that off but I'm sure the sun will come out later on, so I'll wait until later in the day to do that. Instead, I'm gonna work inside on the wall. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. As you can see, I've been doing a sort of little by little rendering uh, 
operation so that I just build up the wall slowly. This is a base layer of render, so it doesn't matter if it looks all funky, and my goal is actually to try to build it up quite a bit so the wall is a little bit more um, plumb. But for now, I would love to get the side parts all the way up and down the sides of the door. I would love to get those rendered. It'll just look nice. And yeah, I think that when I finish the door, it'll kind of make it look a little bit more complete if I can get the sides rendered. Even though it's not the final render, I think it'll just look a lot nicer. So that's my plan for this morning. However, I wanted to point out something. It's hard to tell probably on camera, but though these aren't sort of sharp corners, I actually want it rounded a little bit more than it is, partly because, I don't know, it's sort of a, a spot that might get banged and I don't want the render kind of being knocked off of this this bit here. So if I can actually get the grinder out and round the corners a bit, not only will it give the render um, a bit more of a rough surface to grip onto, it'll also round the corner off a bit more. I can make it even or as even as possible and I just think it'll look a little better. So I'm gonna get the grinder out. I'm gonna grind this side. I probably won't worry about this side for now because I need to really protect the solar from the stone dust, but I can start over here. So that's what I'm gonna do this morning. That was some dusty work, but I'm happy with how it went. Let me show you what I did. Oh man, I didn't expect it to be this <laughs> crazy in here. It's like a snowstorm. I've got a lot of cleaning to do. So what I've done is basically rounded off the corner and also made it a little bit roughed up so that the render has something to grip onto. Same thing over here. This is concrete that's holding the frame in place. There's some weird things happening. No idea why that wood is there. That can stay for the moment. But I've basically just roughed up the concrete so that the lime will grip on a little better. Okay, so let's tidy up a bit and get some lime on the wall. The sun has come out in full force. I have some lime ready to go. And let's stick it on the wall. So while I know watching plastering makes the best noises and it's quite satisfying to watch, I just need to get on with it. So I'm going to check in again when this bad boy is finished. I took a little break today to meet my friends for coffee, but for the most part, I've been working really hard. I finished the plastering for the side of the door. So here we have a nice 
smoothish rendered side of the door. I still have to go through and score it so that it looks like this. And the reason you do that is so that the next layer can grip on a little bit better. But I think I'll wait for this to dry just a little bit more. It is very satisfying though. And then out here, I have the middle part of the cladding basically finished. But rather than sticking this together and trying to fasten it onto the door just as this one little piece, I'm gonna wait until I get the rest of the wood. So that's happening tomorrow and Wednesday. I'll be back at work, hopefully finishing up the cladding for the door. So I'll say goodbye from today and I'll check back in again probably on Wednesday when hopefully the door will finally be clad. Okay, I'm going to wrap this video up here. It's a long one and I'm leaving you on a bit of a cliffhanger. But don't worry, part four will be out tomorrow and you can see if I finally get this door clad or not. I'm still doing the work right now, so it's a mystery to me too. So hopefully, fingers crossed, in part four we have a fully clad door and then I can move on to all of the fun stuff like the artistic features, shutters, the trim, and everything like that. So, I'm going to say goodbye from this video. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions at all, please do leave me a comment. And I'll see you in the next video, part four, out tomorrow.